Okay, we are now going to take a look at one where we kind of put everything that we've been talking about together as far as writing out the equation, balancing it, and again, moving forward with limiting and excess. So in this problem, it says if 16.8 grams of copper 2, so first focus here is on that copper 2, is placed into a solution containing silver nitrate, what mass of silver will be produced? So first and foremost, we've got to write out our equation, and we see that copper, who has currently a plus 2 charge, is going to combine with silver nitrate. Silver has a plus one charge and nitrate has a negative one charge. And guys, at this point, if you don't know how to write those chemical formulas, this is where you need to pause the video and go back and look at those charges and see how I crisscross my charges to come up with these chemical formulas. Then we know that copper has a plus two charge, so it's gonna come over here and bond with the nitrate. Nitrate has a negative one charge, which means we're gonna end up with two nitrates on this side plus silver, and it's going to be just by itself because silver is not diatomic. Now I need to go through and balance. I see that I have two nitrates over here, so I'm going to add a coefficient of two right there. And now I have two silvers, which means I'm going to add a coefficient of two right there, and it's balanced. So step one is complete. Second step, identify a limiting reactant and excess reactant, i.e. we've really just got to figure out how much is going to end up being produced or should be produced. So we're going to start with our two T-charts. It says in the problem that we have 16.8 grams of copper. And the question ultimately is if we had 16.8 grams of copper and the reaction went completely through, what mass of silver would be produced? So I'm trying to get to grams of silver. And at this point, just to get some practice here, I would stop the video and you try setting up this mass to mass stoichiometry problem. Um, if you don't pause, then you're going to hear me work through this. So first thing we've got to do is drop our units grams of copper and when you see grams of copper like this we're going to go through and fill in the molar mass which is 63.546 grams and we know that that represents one mole of copper. Now I'm going to drop down moles of copper and this is the step that a lot of times students get confused on. This is where we're going to start transitioning over into silver and so to transition we use a mole ratio. Remember what we did on Tuesday, when we see mole over mole, we know we've got to look to the coefficient. So now I look up here and I see a coefficient of 2 in front of the silver and a coefficient of 1 in front of the copper. Moles of silver is now going to drop down. And this is where, again, we're going to need molar mass. We know that one mole of silver, if you look at your periodic table, weighs 107.868 grams. And if you go through, you see that all of our units cancel out, and we are left with grams of silver, which is exactly what we wanted. And when we put that in our calculator, end up getting 57.0 grams of silver. Okay, so that's our first possibility. The second is if you look up here, it says 25.65 grams of silver nitrate. So let's see what happens here. If the, if the reaction was allowed to go to completion, what would that look like? And how much silver would be produced. So again we're going to draw our t-chart. Again we're trying to get to grams of silver and we're going to follow that same path. Okay we're going to drop grams of silver nitrate down and anytime we're looking for a mass here we know we've got to find the molar mass and when you stop and find the molar mass you're going to see that it is 169.872 and we know that that represents one mole of silver nitrate. Continue dropping those units down. We're going to drop down moles of silver nitrate. And again, here we are at this transition step. We're trying to transition over to silver, and this is where we're going to do it. So we're going to write up here moles of silver. Look to your coefficients. In front of the silver, I see a coefficient of 2. In front of the silver nitrate, I see a coefficient of 2. And then last thing we're going to do is drop moles of silver down. And we know that one mole represents 107.868 grams. When you multiply straight across and then divide, you end up getting 16.29 grams of silver. So this is where we kind of stop for a moment and we say, okay, we have these two values, 16.8 grams of copper and 25.65 grams of silver nitrate. And they are being added together. And we're trying to figure out how much silver gets produced. Well, look over here at your N values. It's got to be this one, okay? You can't produce 57 grams of silver because you're going to run out of 
silver nitrate. That much silver nitrate can only produce 16.29 grams of silver. So now we've identified our limiting reactant as silver nitrate. That silver nitrate limits how much can be made. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in here. And this is where I would go ahead and say that 16.29 grams of silver is what theoretically should be produced, which means what is going to occur in excess, we are going to have leftover copper. Okay, so that's going to be our excess is copper. Last thing that we need to do here is calculate how much copper is left over. Okay, so this value... This value is done. Do not try to use it. That value means nothing to us. All we needed was to see that copper was in excess. So now what we need to do is to see, well, how much copper actually gets used up in the reaction? And so to do that, we know that the most that can be produced is 16.29 grams of silver. That's the most that can possibly be produced. And we're trying to figure out how much copper gets used up. So let's go through and fill out our T-chart here. 107.868 is our molar mass on silver. And we know that that represents one mole of silver. Let's drop down moles of silver. And this is where we're going to transition over to moles of copper. If we look up to our coefficients, there's a coefficient of two in front of the silver and a coefficient of one in front of the copper. And now drop down units of copper. And we've got... 63.546 is the molar mass on the copper. And I'm going to have to pause right here and put this in my calculator because I did not do this calculation on the front end. So the amount of copper that actually gets used is 4.798 grams of copper which is kind of crazy to think about that this is how much got used up because look at how much we originally started with. We started with 16.8 grams. So again, until you get used to this, write this in, put amount used up in reaction. Okay, so now we're still trying to figure out how much is left over. Well, you know, look back at the original problem up here. You know that you started with 16.8 grams of copper. So if that's what we started with was 16.8 grams of copper, look at what you calculated over here. This is how much should be used up, 4.798 subtracted, and that's going to tell us how much is left over. And I'm getting 12.0017, so we'll just say 12.00 grams of copper in excess. That's how much we have left over. So this really is putting quite a bit of information together. We wrote out the equation, we balanced it, we identified the limiting reactant and how much would be produced. Then we came down here and calculated, well, how much is going to be used up in terms of excess, and we calculated how much excess is left over. So at this point, the next thing is going to be to do bring in percent yield.